All right, what's going on? Dark and darker dungeon delvers. We just have an amazing amount of new news that keeps dropping from dark and darker, including these new weekly update videos. And they're absolutely juicy lately. So here comes um, this new video from Dark and Darker and Iron Mace. And I just have an absolute ton of good news. So I hope you guys enjoy this. First, we're just going to look at uh, really quick the fact that it used to cost 70 gold to be admitted into High Roller down from the initial 100 gold. So here we actually readied up and we queued into that. And then that's basically what's going to happen coming into the new High Roller Goblin Caves. So everyone's been asking for it. I think Discord is aflame right now with communication talking about it. So this is uh, two and a half minutes of the High Roller Goblin Cave. We got new monsters, new map modules, and more. Alright, so right away we noticed that the Barbarian has the Orc cosmetic skin on. So he's actually got the brand new Orc cosmetic. He's got a little six pack and kind of grayish looking skin. good movement from the rogue. If he takes a hit here, he probably gets one shot. Looks like he's going for a little bit of a looting build. He's got lockpick expert, trap detect, Smoke Bomb and Invis. Not a lot of offensive capability here on this build. Alright, so this is cool because we can see that this rogue is pretty boosted. He's not basic gear at all. He's at least level 15. He's got all four perks. Uh, he's got 100 health, which is about 20% more than starting rogues have. He's got uh, almost a full kit, including a cape. He's only really missing a ring. He's got the, of course, boosted hand crossbow and the upgraded rogue cowl. I like that he's just trying to steal some loot here. That looks like a, a double jump right there to me. He went really high on this jump. Let me go back a little bit more. This, this definitely feels like a double jump. Right, because watch how much height he gets on this. Yeah, that, that's got to be a double jump. <laughs> The other thing is, this is an elite goblin. He's got red skin, and look at the damage. This rogue had 100 HP, and one hit took him down to 50%, plus he's got a poison ticking. Look at that damage. That was like 60% of his health right there, and one hit from one goblin on a fairly geared rogue, and he's got a blue Chris dagger. party here. Oh my god. That warrior must have been so geared. Look, he took a hit from the barbarian and two hits from the rogue in the back. It hits him with the axe there and there. Still alive. Wow, what a legend. Alright, so that is the end of the High Roller Goblin video. Definitely looking forward to Goblin Caves, and then we're just going to come over here. So he actually looked right there in the video at Grave Essence. So we had the four other quest items already discovered from the previous videos. 
And now we can actually know that this little soil here that I used to have question marks on is now Grave Essence. And why I think this is quest items is because a couple of months ago, the devs were talking about how they didn't want to release early access until they'd finished some key systems to give us more gameplay and a longer gameplay loop. And a huge part of that was the quest system. And so one of the suggestions I'd made, which actually got a lot of upvotes on the Discord, was just adding kind of basic quests similar to Escape from Tarkov. Something like where the alchemist would say, you know, one day I shall unlock the power of eternal life, but first we must understand undeath. Bring the alchemist ten skeletal bones. And so there he looted a grave essence, and we know there's, um, you know, skeletons and other monsters inside of Goblin Cave. And so I think we would just change this to bring them, you know, ten grave essences, and you finish the quest. And whatever that may, you know, might be a hundred gold as a reward, a couple healing potions you know, progression in the quest chain, or maybe you unlock another merchant to get quests from them. I just feel like it's very likely that all of these items with their slot type invalid are going to be quest items. And since we have two different rarities of the same item, a broken skull and an intact skull, to me, it sounds like we're gonna have multiple steps in the quest chain, and you can just do some of these basic quests inside of normal lobbies, normal Howling Crypt, normal Ruins, and normal goblin caves and then toward the end of the quest lines or later or if you wanted to you could just drop earlier into high roller and get you know multiple rarities of this and so eventually all players would have to run high roller if they want to finish all of their quests either way i'm super excited this brings the total maps in the game up to eight we've got howling crypt into inferno we have the ruins and goblin cave that's four and then we have the high roller variants of Howling Crypt and Inferno is six, plus the Colosseum map, which is only available in high, uh, excuse me, high roller, that's seven, and then high roller Goblin Cave. So we're up to eight maps, eight classes, and on our way to eight bosses now that we have the other uh, new boss. So what I want to do really fast is I also want to showcase the new boss. So I didn't go over this very much in my last video. I also didn't realize it was a new boss. I thought it was a reskinned lich, but this is actually now confirmed. We have a new Inferno boss called the Skeleton Warlord. It also has a new stacking debuff with a large blue area of effect, and it summons new skeletons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick shout out to one of the troubadours called Ryan Six Days a Week, and I'm gonna link down below in the pinned comment his videos. I feel like you guys should give this guy a follow. He is really, really good at covering information, hey, and he data mines like just an absolute legend. So I'm gonna go straight over to kind of the end, and so we can take a look at this AOE. So this is the important part. The last key difference, which I think is the biggest, is the Aquamarine AOE spell we briefly see as a team leaves the room. It seems to cover quite a large portion of the ground, almost the entire arena floor from the angle that we're given. This is dramatically different than the Lich fight. Also, all of the monsters here are these new Skeleton Royal Guards, and you can see in the top right that it wiped the entire group. So you can see also here, they're, because they're standing in it, they're starting to stack this debuff. And Ryan thought that it was a slowing debuff, and I kind of agree, because all three of these players did die to the adds, so I, I feel like you're going to have to clear the adds and then fight the boss. Whereas with the Lich, you can kind of avoid, you know, the skeleton archers and like little skeletal minions that he summons. This boss looks way harder and more melee centric. You'll probably need an actual frontline tank. And we might see the first required use or, you know, not required, but recommended use of a fighter running the taunt to taunt these monsters and then use a pavis to block while everybody else kills them or what have you. Um, anyway, I'm definitely looking forward to the new boss and the new Goblin High Roller. Then we have a little bit of more beautiful news because Dark and Darker was just granted a age rating by the organization known as PEGI, the Pan-European Game Information. This is big because an absolute ton of countries, especially in EU, use PEGI to devise the ratings for their games, not only for PC, but here, possibly most importantly, for major console manufacturers because we've already seen that the developers said that after they release this game to PC, very soon after that, they wanna to release to consoles, hopefully with crossplay. And so Sony, PlayStation, Microsoft, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch all use Peggy as their rating. And so if we get a crossplay, you know, we will see dark and darker 
going from PC to consoles very soon thereafter. And if we actually search Dark and Darker, we see that they were granted an age rating of 16 due to <laughs> use of drugs, which I think in this case is mostly the alcohol in-game, the sort of mead, uh, animated violence, and then in-game purchases because we're probably going to be getting cosmetics, of course. This is great news because we know that with the DMCA going on right now, anybody else who publishes will likely drop them just like Steam. So if they went to Epic and then next on DMCA'd, then Epic would take Dark and Darker off. But if Iron Mace self-publishes Dark and Darker, it doesn't matter if Nexon DMCA is them because they will keep going because they know they can win. That's why we keep getting these videos every week showcasing new maps, new bosses, new classes. The development is in full swing and everything is looking absolutely beautiful for Iron Mace. And speaking of which, Iron Mace just released some new press kit on their website and new screenshots. We've got uh, the High Roller Coliseum screenshot there. But most importantly, it's this press kit because they have released some new artwork. And most importantly, a new logo. So we've got Iron Mace, right? Iron Mace Games presents the Blacksmith Game Launcher. Let's go, chat. Let's go. Iron Mace Games presents Dark and Darker on the Blacksmith Games Launcher. This is on the way to being self-published. And along with this, I have to point out the fact that we are very, very close to the one-year anniversary of Dark and Darker. This game came out in August of last year on the 19th. Will we see Dark and Darker be self-published? on the 19th of August, 2023. Stay tuned and find out. I'll also be dropping a new video here in a little while with even more information because we've got everything we need to compile. What it's going to be like to play Dark and Darker in early access in the confirmed three month wipe cycle with eight bosses, eight maps, eight classes and quests. I'll see you for the next one.